Now I would like to give a proof of what is sometimes called the second isomorphism theorem for groups. Sometimes it's called the first isomorphism theorem, sometimes other names. So there is no standard uh, uh, name for this theorem, but this is what I mean. So the setting is that we have, say, H and N subgroups of a given, of a given um, group G. And N is normal. But then one has the following isomorphism. The quotient of H by the intersection of H and N is isomorphic to the product HN quotient N. So before going into the details of this proof, the first thing we immediately observe is that we have quotients here and we know that quotients quotient groups are allowed when the, the group by which we are quotienting is a normal subgroup. Namely, we therefore immediately deduce that it must be the case that H intersection N uh, and N are normal. But normal where we are quotienting. Namely, H intersection N will be a normal subgroup of H and here N has to be a normal subgroup of the product H N. So let me write this down. First thing to show here is namely that H intersection N is normal in H and N oops is normal in H times N. Otherwise the the quotient so in the, the quotient will just remain a set and we cannot define the natural operation of product for the quotient of the cosets. Okay so let's start with the first uh, the first thing to prove namely that the intersection is normal inside H. So we take an element in the intersection so both in N and in H, and we need to show that uh, uh, the, conjugate, the conjugate elements are still in the group uh, by, by conjugating with elements in uh, H, since we have to show that this group is normal inside H. So for any, uh, say, G H, we have g times x inverse of g. Well, here both g and x are in h, and therefore this is an element of h, just because h is a subgroup. At the same time, g times x times g uh, inverse is in n as well, since g in any case is an element of the big group g and uh, x is an element of n. So since n is normal uh, by, the, by assumption, we know that this will be this product will be in n. So by these two we get that this element is in the intersection. Now for the second part uh, we want to show we want to show that n is a normal subgroup of the product h times n. So we take an element x in n and an element g uh, in, the, in the product group. We need to show that, of course, g times x times g minus 1 is in n. Now, g here is an element of the product, so we can definitely write g as, uh, say, h times n, where for some choice of h in n, in uh, h, sorry, let me rewrite this, and n, little n, capital N. Therefore, 
we have here uh, g times x g minus 1 is equal to h times n times x again minus 1 h minus 1 and now we observe that the element here n times x times m n minus 1 has to be in n since uh, we are inside n as a subgroup since both n and x are elements of n and on the other hand so we can view this element in n and we are multiplying uh, we are conjugating by an element h which is for sure an element of g and by normality by normality of the group n we know that this has to be an n and this concludes our verification. Now we want to show our isomorphism, namely that um, the quotient so here is the strategy I want to adopt. We could uh, proceed in different ways, maybe directly exhibiting an isomorphism explicit on this uh, uh, between these two groups this would be fine but i will try to adapt what i think it's a smarter way which is to realize uh, what sits here to the quotient as the kernel of an of a morphism and applying uh, the results we already know about morphism and kernels I want to realize the intersection H and N as the kernel of a surjective group morphism. Say E from H here, from this group, to our target group, H, this quotient, H dot N quotient by N. So this would give, well, let's say, would give, once we prove that such a phi exists, would uh, give that h over the kernel of this morphism is isomorphic to the image of this. This we know by the what sometimes is called the first isomorphism theorem or uh, basically the basic uh, the fundamental theorem about uh, morphism kernels and images of group morphism. So of course, if we had such a situation, then since we are, uh, if we construct a surjective morphism, then, then, then the image would be the whole target, h times n over n, and this would just be h over our kernel. And we would be done. So let's try to construct is uh, map. You don't need so much mm, creativity here to come up with a map namely where could we map the little the little element h if not for example in the so here on this side we are uh, in the group of uh, cosets given by the say the left cosets of uh, n inside this product 
So I will map H to the left coset HM as the element in this group. Now, what is the kernel of V? By definition, this would be the set of elements in H such that uh, H times M is equal to the identity, ele identity element in the group of cosets, which is N as a coset. So, in other words, this uh, condition here uh, is equivalent to having H in M. And so this is equal to M intersection H. This is a set described as a set of H in H such that H is in M. Now, it only remains to show that this map is surjective. Uh, well, if we just do it explicitly, let's take an element which we directly write as a coset H times M in N in the target. And we have that if we apply phi to the element H, then by definition, by our definition here, this will be H times N. But of course, uh, we can also change the representative and also and write this as H times little n times N, since this would not modify this coset. And this shows that the map is surjective, and we are done.